the Elysian Grand Evil Gallery Arc. It's the new album by Infinite Annihilator. For the purposes of myself, and no doubt for y'all, I am not going to attempt to state that again, because I no doubt owe apologies to about 10,000 people at the moment. Um, but yeah, new Infinite Annihilator album. You guys wanted it. You guys are getting it. The impatience is real. The impatience is now gone, because here we are. The time is up. The time is now. You can't see me, but I'm right here. So hi, how you doing? I'm Cover Killer Nation. So, Infinite Annihilator, Technical Deathcore is really one of the best ways that this could be described. Either that or just epic or just ridiculous. Uh, there are many words uh, that could be used for this. Brutal is certainly another adjective that would be extremely well suited for this band. And wow. So you hear the word deathcore and the very first thing that no doubt comes to your mind is, okay, I can kind of predict where this is going to go. We have three to four minute long uh, songs. Uh, there's going to be a lot of breakdowns. There's going to be some big squeals here and there. Some other weird gastric noises that you have no idea how they make. And there you go. End of the day. 35 minute long album. Wrong you would be. 11 tracks, more than 50 minutes. And there is a track on here that nearly makes it to the 18 minute mark. Yeah. Nearly makes it to the 18 minute mark. It's pretty... If an Annihilator strikes me as the band that's trying to take uh, the concept of Deathcore and be their scavenger. Be their real, uh, I guess, their death. You know, Death for Death Metal was the one that aimed to really, you know, just add some things to the sound and showcase that it's more than just the, the, the one approach that was being handled by the earliest members of that subgenre. Uh, and it feels like Infinite Annihilator is doing that with, with Deathcore to really showcase that you can do all of these different things. And it's still, at the end of the day, will have that little close-knit association. But before we talk about this music, why the hell are these guys not on the Metal Archives? I mean, why are they not in the encyclopedia? Well, I know why that is. It's because somebody on there claimed they're not metal, which is kind of comical. Maybe that means that they found beyond metal. I don't know. So, Unholy Grave Birth starts this off, provides a little bit of an introduction for somebody who is fresh out of, you know, Infant Annihilator Boot Camp, who's heard absolutely nothing of their actual music, has only really graduated from this sort of boot camp of reputation, hearing what this band is all about. So you get, the first thing that you hear is a baby's crying that slowly but surely morphs into something absolutely disgusting. And it is pretty awesome. I like the effect that they used on this. And then it thrusts directly into their breed of, and really their breed of music, whenever it comes to a lot of the songs on this album, reminds me a little bit of making love. And especially if it's something where you are not aiming to just make love, it's sort of just a reckless sort of affair type of thing that's going on. Because at times the music is absolutely reckless, it is 100%, there is no, there, there, there's just no control. It's an uncontrollable, untamed beast that just flows uncontrollably, that just flows chaotically. But then at moments, whenever it slows down, it almost slows down to a very sinister and very scary potential. Whenever you hear those lowest thrusts, it's almost like, you know, being in that situation where you're making love. And you have somebody who's a little bit overexcited that gets overstimulated in those regions. And you're just slowly but surely torturing them with those slower thrusts. Either way that you really want to handle this, this track certainly delivers all of the goods. It has a big, powerful chorus that really has a little bit of autopsy written all over it, but whereas autopsy is a little bit more pure death metal, uh, this is one that sort of teeters the ground between deathcore and uh, regular death metal, only because of the overall composition of it. And that's the only thing that really uh, sort of separates the link. But going in the cruciform and then in the motherless miscarriage, motherless miscarriage, by the way, is wow. The lyricism immediately starts to take control and starts to become noticeable to you whenever you reach this point, if you haven't noticed it already. It is certainly not stuff that you want to share with your cousin who's in the third grade. Either that or it's definitely not poetry that you're going to want to share with your mother because you love to tell her all your feelings. This is definitely depraved work. This is definitely commentary of a different degree. And if you remember us talking about, I think it was Volva Denya a little while ago, and spoke about the sort of sewer tongue that those lyrics were really able to boister up. Uh, Infinite Annihilator may be sort of close behind in that category, although theirs may seem a little bit more focused and a little less obsessed with just trying to gross somebody out. This instead is one that definitely 
feels a lot more like a, a stunning and just absolutely silver-tongued commentary on a lot of things, and also just trying to make up as much gore as humanly possible. So whenever you get into Behold the Kingdom of the Wretched Undying, that's whenever you're reaching 18, nearly 18 minute long territory, and this is a track that is, it, it, they use their pace to their advantage, that's for damn sure. They don't try to go a thousand miles per hour for all 18 minutes. Chances are, if they did that, they would spontaneously combust, and they would be sent to another universe, and another universe would get to enjoy this band, as opposed to us. And really, the way that we treat them, it seems, you know, them not being on the metal archives, you don't hear much about them in the traditional metal press, you know. Looking up stuff about these guys is not exactly easy. Maybe they would appreciate them. I don't know. For all the fans that this band has, it definitely seems like they're a bit underrated, either that or a bit underappreciated. And I know this is just their sophomore release, but I find that a little odd. But really, the vocal style is another thing that you notice on this song. You notice the fact that they're going to employ multiple styles of vocals, whether it be that occasional pig squeal, whether it be some of those lower, deeper registered lows that tries to make it sound like that Satan's having a bowel movement. And then you have some things that really are arranged in between, and it varies. It's almost like giving the whole Deathcore universe a little bit of a sonic playbook, either that or expand that sonic range uh, that it was really you know, capable for a vocalist in this style. And the only thing that I'll say about this is that right there at the end, 16 minute mark roughly, right as we're about to hit our climax on this track, uh, the vocals there are some of the weakest that I hear on this album and actually some of the weakest that I've heard within the genre. These are just very, very bad. And if it had a theatrical effect that I'm missing, then I do apologize for that. But either than that, it was more distracting than it was uh, really enjoyable. But then you still have a whole hell of a lot left. This is track five of 11. They just slapped it right there in the middle. Kind of a risky move. Definitely sort of paid off, though. Did not at all really slow down the pace of this album. This is instead one that showcases their ability to tell a little bit of a story, and it showcases that they sort of do that with each and every song that they do. It's not one where they need 18 minutes to do that. Soil the Stillborn was a track that many people heard uh, and really sort of heralded in what Infinite Annihilator was going to bring with this disc. There's a lot of positivity toward that. I agree with that. Then moving into other tracks such as Neutra, uh, Neutered in Utero, um, uh, Pelt of Innocent Flesh, and I'm just hopping over everything today, and then Blasphemarian, we have a couple of, we have a, a trio of tracks here, the first of which is nearly five minutes, the second two, both eclipse the seven minute mark, that just continues the insanity. That's the best way to describe what this album is. It's unfiltered, undoctrinated insanity. And I know undoctrinated is probably not a word, but guess what it is now? It is absolute insanity. And really, you have to marvel at it a little bit. They found a way to give Metalcore that, you know, technical edge, that extra pump, that extra circumstance. They found a way to really feel like they are the, or at least sound like they are some of the fastest players on the planet. And sometimes the rapid fire of their vocal delivery makes you wonder when they breathe. It makes you wonder, maybe they're not human. There's a lot of great things that this album does that really just feels like it sort of breaks the mold a little bit. It sort of transforms this into a something a little bit different, something a little bit bigger, something that elevates them above some of their other contemporaries. It's a lot of songs, but either way, it's definitely something to behold. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. By and large, this style right here, uh, not one of my top five favorites. So, I'm just going to be honest with that right out of the gate. But I found this album really hard to put down. And the principal reason is because it was a little bit of a crack in the mold, just as I described. It was a bit different. It was something that the band attempted some new things, some great things, some things that you don't see very often whenever you tread to this territory. And based off of that risk, it really paid off for them. It has left many folks with a, just a stunned feeling that this album just blew their ass away. And while for me it didn't have that same registered effect, it did remind me a little bit whenever I listened to Autopsy's Return album a couple of years ago. Listening to that and just hearing how focused it was and just how great the energy was and how it felt like it was still trying to add a little bit more to what death metal was all about while not trying to change up the form <coughs> excuse me, the formula all that much. That's what I feel like has happened here. I feel like they don't want to, you know, necessarily change the formula. They want to rewrite it a little bit. And they want to rewrite a different style of it. Almost like exploring the overall concept. You know, exploring, you know, a field. 
and giving it a fresh set of studies in order for other people to examine and for other people to maybe build on. This is one of those building block albums, and I think it's how it's going to be remembered. So for me, though, this is still an 85 out of 100. Technically, it's masterful. Whenever it comes to the lyricism, whenever it comes to the vocals and that delivery, not all my thing, but I could definitely understand why people praise this band to the moon, because they have a lot to offer, and they are definitely doing that. And this, being their sophomore release only, should be very, very scary to many folks out there, because that means that they could still improve, they could still get better, and they might still be able to write something that tops this. I don't know what you guys think about this album. Brand New Infant Annihilator. I'm not saying the title again. Why? Because I'm an asshole and I don't want to fuck it up. What'd you guys think of it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Cover Killing Nation. Drink it in, man. Um, bada bing, bada boom. We're out of here. Later.